like to call the meeting to order, ask you all to stand. And Mr. Bateson, if you'd lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As we look at the agenda, the uh, first item up is minutes to consider and act upon the minutes of regular meeting of April 19th, 2017. I have a motion to accept. Take a motion. A second. Second. Any discussion or amendments? Sheila, do you want me to bring it up or are you just going to correct it? Item number 12. Now you got to spill the beans. Item number 12 just reads funny. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like there's a word. Okay. Yeah. So I just asked her to correct it. I don't know if that's enough to hold up the issue, but it's just a, for lack of a better term, it's a typo type thing you're correcting. Yes. Yes. All right. Is that? I think that doesn't take a whole no. motion, at least in my mind, if that's okay with the body. We're good with it. Yes. Good. Yes. Any further comments on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Next up, we have some recognition for the St. Thomas Aquinas Wildcats. Junior Varsity Girls Basketball Team for winning the New England CYO 5th, 6th grade Basketball Championships. Congratulations. <laughs> and would somebody like to get up to the podium and tell us what happened? Okay. okay. This is our so, coach. Yes, we. Um, yeah. And so please we, introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Dave Highland. Thank you very much for this opportunity. By the way, it's a great, okay. it's a great honor to have the girls here today. So uh, we knew we had a very talented group of girls, and what they proved was they're actually the best team in, in all of New England for the school, uh, the school championships. I was over the course of two days, so we had uh, two games on Saturday and a game on Sunday. Uh, they fought very hard. It was a tough, tough game on Sunday. Real tight match. Um, but what we found is this, this really became a team, and they really en embraced the team concept um, in terms of passing and rebounding and, and playing for your teammates. So we're really proud of you guys, uh, what you're able to do. And I think what, what really distinguished, I've coached about five or six different teams over the years. What distinguished these girls, I think, was the passion that we saw to play the game, to have fun. They just love basketball and love playing the game. So uh, it, was a great, it was a great season. They had a blast, I think, along the way. And, we were able to pull out the championship at the end of the end of the season. Fantastic. Any comments from my colleagues? Right, two, two things. How many? What was the overall team record for the year? Oh, that's a that's a sore spot. We oh. had one loss. Oh. <laughs> oh. But how many? Games? We are about we are about I don't know thirty five and one or something yeah. like that. Something like that. One we lost by like two points one game. Um, it was early in the season. Early in the season. So, yeah. yeah. So. But it, it drove us to drove us to be ready for the championship for New England. So it was it was probably a good thing after all. Okay. It, and where was the championship uh, held? It was actually in the Bridgeport Diocesan. Listen, thirty-five and one is a remarkable accomplishment, and uh, congratulations to you. I think you all owe your parents a big thank you for taking you to thirty-six games <laughs> <in> a <the> year. <laughs> Um, you know, my, my brother went to St. Thomas and he was part of uh, the St. Thomas basketball program too, so I know the commitment it takes to travel around the state for the games on the weekends and especially tournament time, going back and forth because I, uh, I was a passenger on a lot of, a lot of those uh, trips. So, um, uh, it's, it's a remarkable accomplishment that you stuck for it through the entire season and ended 35-1 with uh, New England Championship. So, Congratulations, it's, uh, it's an accomplishment you won't, won't forget soon. Good job, Will, 35 and one, very proud, and to the parents, yeah, those weekend tournaments can be a bear. Thank, thanks, you guys did a great job. Well, looking at uh, some Connecticut basketball history, two things come to mind. One, UConn women finished up with one loss, and they're like one of the best teams in the history of the game, so you're in good company on that. Second, do you girls know the last team from Fairfield to win a New England basketball championship? He was here, Actually, Fred was here two years ago. Our daughters played on that team yeah. two years ago. Yeah. The JV girls, St. Thomas, two years ago. Really? Yes. Congratulations. How about another one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking there's a, there's a story you're about to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Leading the witness. Yeah. 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 
leading yes. <laughs> 1955. <laughs> the Roger Little boys basketball team won an Oingo championship, and much like you girls, they lost one game. Uh -huh. They lost the state championship for Connecticut. Were able to go to the New England championship because the top two teams got to go, and they actually up winning the New England championship that year. And my dad was an assistant coach on that team, which is why I remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're in good company. So congratulations. I, I just Obviously, there aren't that many New England championship teams, so you, you, you have a phenomenal record. Uh, and you made our town really proud. So thank you very much. And on behalf of that, we have some certificates to uh, offer you to commemorate your championship. And I think Jerry asked us to stand in front of the podium. Sure. Yeah. Over here. So. We're in front. Yeah. Girls, we're going to ask you to line up along the table there. But not yet. We'll call you up one at a time. <laughs> wow. Good team action, though. You all came up together. <laughs> Coach, good job. All right. Oh, uh, Catherine, is it bossy? Is that how that's pronounced? Yeah. Okay. Catherine, where are you? Mia Cristadero. Congratulations. And, whoa. Persephone Deeds? How do I say it? Persephone. Persephone Deeds. All right. Congratulations. Katie Fitzgerald. Isabella Feligny. Lucy Highland. Rory Kutsey. And Janie Palman. And Ellie Price. Get out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> that works. You got it? Okay. Thank, Thank you, Coach, for all the time. Good job. Thanks, guys. 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 Thanks, All right, moving on. Next item on the agenda is an appointment, but it's for information only. I think as most folks have heard, but just to officially confirm it, uh, the new Director of Parks and Recreation is Anthony Calabrese uh, of 216 Autumn Ridge Road of Fairfield, and that appointment date was April 17, 2017. Item six on the agenda is to hear a presentation on the Fairfield Ludlow and Fairfield Ward High School Solar Carport Proposals. Thomas, please come up to the podium and fill us in. Now, just to be clear, this is just an update or report. This, there's no proposal or resolution before us today. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I'm sorry, what's his name? Scott Thompson. He's chair of this committee. Okay. No, no, you can't do that. 
No, yeah. maybe Jerry, you want to tell me where it goes. <laughs> Slide the podium over an inch. Yeah. Let's see what runs these. And Scott, if you'll also just take a moment to introduce yourself as part of this. Okay. So I am Scott Thompson. Um, I am a volunteer with the town's Clean Energy Task Force, and I work very closely with Ed Bowman on our clean energy initiatives here in town. Uh, for the past uh, six months, we've been working uh, with the town and the school uh, staff and administration to uh, develop this uh, proposal uh, for the town to place solar PV panels on carports at Ward High School and Ludlow High School. And um, as you recall, we had a uh, proposal a couple years ago uh, related to carports at the train station and kind of in the in the wake of that, uh, Mr. Timniak uh, suggested that we look at Ludlow High School, and it was a really good idea. Um, we um, have kind of followed up on that and, uh, and uh, put both high schools together uh, and have been working them uh, through um, the outreach process. Um, as you probably know, there is already a uh, carport uh, in town at the rec center, and that solar carport makes 100% uh, of the power uh, for the rec center. Uh, one of the things that we have been trying to improve upon with that is we've been doing uh, as much community outreach uh, related to these um, as we can possibly do. Um, we have uh, gone door to door uh, to all the neighbors um, around uh, Ward High School that would uh, be able to see it. With love though, it's kind of tucked in the back so the neighbors really I uh, won't get to see it. Um, we've uh, presented this uh, to the PTAs at both schools. Uh, we've held public meetings that uh, were advertised and um, got a pretty good turnout. We had about 20 people come out and, and uh, the really exciting thing that I can report is that the uh, support that we're getting is really great. We've gotten um, over 250 letters of support from residents and students um, that are very interested. Let me, uh, I, so I wanted to kind of talk about the community outreach because I think that's important. This is, of course, another, another step in that process. Um, we've uh, presented this to the Board of Ed already, and um, they gave us very, very positive feedback. Um, and they will be uh, voting on it at their meeting next week. Um, and we're very uh, optimistic. Uh, on that. So we, we submitted a packet and some of the details. Um, first, it's a terrific economic proposal. Uh, this is a power purchase agreement. There's no cost to the town. The town simply agrees to buy the power that the system produces at a rate that's lower than what they currently pay. Um, using the town's formula to calculate that savings as, as had been, been done on 25, 30 other PPA pro solar PPA projects that have come before this one. Um, the, the savings estimate is a little over $1.2 million over the life of the PPA. Uh, there's great uh, environmental benefits. Uh, not only will we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions through projects like this, we also um, can help um, improve the local air quality with time. See, we, we have regional air quality issues here in Fairfield County. Uh, schools tend to be a, a hot spot for poor air quality um, because of all the buses, because of all the car traffic. And so uh, this uh, proposed system provides the opportunity for uh, students uh, to charge electric vehicles. Uh, and so uh, we've had some inquiry from both high schools, from students and teachers alike. Um, the uh, EV adoption is on a steep climb here, and uh, there will be, over the coming years and, and coming decades, a greater transformation of our automobile fleet to electric vehicles. So, so that will help improve air quality within our community. And lastly, I think kind of the, really the most important thing 
and I hate to say it's more important than economics, but nothing's more important than that, I guess. Um, but something really important is the educational benefit of this project. You know, we've got 30 uh, solar projects that have been completed that are in the works. Uh, most of them are not visible to the community, and so students uh, can learn about the rooftop solar that's on both of the high schools already. Those were completed last year, so the rooftops already have solar. Not, they're not shown in the, in the graphic. And, and since I may be uh, going on a little long here with this board up, I'll show you the ward board. Um, having the students be able to see, touch, feel, and interact uh, with, with solar and clean energy, alternative vehicle, electric charging, we think that is a really, really powerful thing. And, and we already know that um, some of the schools are starting to discuss this project in the context of their AP environmental science uh, classes. Um, we've heard from many students too that they're they're talking about it, debating it, and, and excited about it. And so, um, to date, we're not aware of uh, any opposition through all the outreach that we've done, um, and uh, we're we're really excited about uh, the prospect of this project being approved. Um, we will. Uh, Assuming we we achieve uh, board of ed approval tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, next week, we will come back to you on May 17th and ask for your approval of this project. Any comments from the board? Uh, no, I mean I'm excited to see it actually on uh, in the picture. Is that? the maximum we could put on the facility I guess that's I mean I'm looking at the ward photo there and I mean I recognize the school would be shadowing it if you put it on the other parking lot as well um, that's the recommendation and I guess for Mr. Bowman is it, which solar company is going to be doing it Skyview Skyview yeah we um, it, it, first let me say that the existing rooftop system makes about a third of the electricity and these carports will add another third, so it'll bring us up to about two thirds. Um, we did consider um, at Ward, we considered uh, doing this side of the school as an option, um, and we felt like that we really wanted to be sensitive to the neighborhood context here, and so we thought that tucking it back behind the school, offset from the road, um, uh, screened by vegetation out that end. We felt that was a lot more sensitive to the neighbors and as a result um, our our public meeting that we had at Ward was, was Kumbaya. And so, uh, but you, it, it is not the large, you could certainly do larger, but we, we um, early on withdrew that part of the proposal and, and went with this concept. Mr. Bateson? Uh, thanks, Scott. So you, if you put it along the road there, you you would anticipate problems with the neighbors. Did you? You didn't even have the discussion. You just didn't even bring it up. Right. We we did uh, withdraw that uh, part of the proposal. Um, we did show the neighbors that concept. So it w we had a uh, a slide. Um, I don't think we had a full board, but we had a PowerPoint slide. We showed that to them, and uh, with of the 20 people there with one exception they, they agreed with our our recommendation to go with this proposal um, there was actually um, I should mention Ludlow I should not just talk about Ward um, there was a um, concept for Ludlow that had slightly more uh, capacity um, the concern was raised by the administration that it, it would um, in the layout we had proposed it would obscure their view of their parking lots so uh, Ludlow is kind of elevated up above the parking lot. They enjoy a nice bird's eye view. And um, they like to be able to see the kids coming and going. So we altered the concept. It got a little smaller as a result. Not a lot smaller, but a little smaller. And by altering the concept, we were able to really maintain that visual line of sight. And then in addition, as part of that kind of 
call it safety and security, we added uh, security cameras uh, to both high schools. So there will be security cameras that will be tied into the school Under system. Under the canopies? Under the canopies, yeah. Tied into the school system as well as the associated uh, police station system. When it comes to Ludlow, that one, that island, you have one, a, a big island. Did you think about putting that on the side or? Sorry, that's, uh, that's the old one. <laughs> we put the, uh, that was the original one. Here is the final one. Okay, uh, Scott, can you put that up on a? Uh, Sorry about that. They look so much alike. I got them mixed up. But, so we had originally, if you will, this, which was a little bigger. When we moved it over here, and we analyzed the site from the school, you could very much more clearly see underneath to see what was going on from a line of sight. And I actually have a kind of a rendering that shows what that looks like as well. If you can imagine when that original piece was in the middle, it obscured. So that's coming from the first floor looking out? This is the second floor, but we analyzed the first, second, and third, and we have PowerPoints, but these boards are kind of ex expensive. We just plotted up the, uh, the, the second floor here. So it's not 100% visual sight line, but it's, if, if you would compare it to what we had previously, it's much improved. And, and Mr. Hatzis was really a champion for this uh, concern. And Who sets the uh, locations of the panels? Is that determined by the orientation of the sun? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So in other words, you can't move these panels to other places in a lot because this is ideally where they want them? Yeah, ideally you want an um, orientation that's facing south as much as possible. That gives you the best bang for the buck, the best production for the cost. Uh, but you can go east and west orientation. Um, but we, we had to uh, maintain within not only trying to maximize the solar production, but within the constraints of the parking lot layout to make sure that we don't uh, lose any parking spaces and I, I think if you didn't read that in the packet there are, is no loss in, in parking spaces. I one of the other I should mention one of the other kind of key considerations that we worked through with the uh, administrators and talking to parents was the uh, con concern about student drivers around the around the columns and kids maybe dinging up their cars and uh, so as you can see these uh, these concrete footings with steel columns are you know, exist throughout the system. We not shown in the rendering, but there'll be pads placed on those. And so, if a car bumps into it with a bumper or a door, it's you know, unless they're going really fast, it's not going to create um, any damage. You should uh, just mention in the past, these kids have been running over the poles, knocking them down with their cars. We want to knock these down. Yeah, and that's actually one of the things that um, school construction and the administration is happy about that we will be create, putting these, will be creating what's called a traffic calming effect. So instead of having people racing through the parking lot, they will uh, inherently uh, need to slow down to navigate the lot, and that's a good thing from a safety perspective. At Ward, when you presented this to the neighbors, did you give them, I, I saw where you had the leaf off, it looks like it's from a street level. Did you give it from an elevated view for where people that live across the street looking down? Did you give them that vantage point? Or were they interested in it? The, no, uh, we did not. Um, we did knock on all the doors and, and uh, share our fact sheet with all the neighbors on Naps Highway. And actually, the, the neighbors that were, were most visually impacted are the neighbors on Old Farm, which is actually through the woods. Um, on the back side. On the back side of Ward. I was just going to point out that the, when you look at the elevations, Ed, I think that the elevations across the street, across Naps Highway, is it low? are, are lower. So that's what I'm second, going. Your yeah. second floor is kind of like looking straight into it. It's kind of what, uh, Okay. That's what I, I was condo, looking at the leaf There's off. a whole section of condos that are yeah. backed off and really not at the street. So you're street. thinking it's below level, so they're actually going to be think, looking at the, them, if you not look at, down on right, them. Right. I think that the grade goes up slowly right. to the ward. Which seems more amenable, people looking at them as opposed if, to down on them. If my real estate memory is correct on that. So yeah, we've we there talked to are. these neighbors. We, That's it. In, in our public meeting, not only did we advertise it, and the uh, zoning folks require we notify a list of 27 abutters. Yeah. We sent a letter to 200 neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we went and knocked on doors. The neighbors that had the actually the most visual impact is during the winter. The folks on Old Farm here, 
And there are five houses, and all five of them have uh, given us a letter of support, um, with the exception of one who's given us a verbal support, and we're following up with him on the letter. He wasn't home the day we went knocking. But uh, these folks have had no concern, and we, we really think that we blanketed the, uh, the area. Uh, Go who's going to be presenting? I mean, is this going to be a request from Ed Bowman, or is it going to be a recommendation of the BOE? You know what I mean? Like, uh, sorry, it's jointly with the, the Clean Energy Task Force that, that really did all the legwork on it, but coming through Department of Public Works as a town. Like the other agency. ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're always on Ed's coattails here. Because um, this the, is financed <coughs> by a power purchase agreement. Right. So at some point it's going to be, as we did there, the uh, when this comes through, the reason it's going to all three boards is because we're having to expend Assuming it's going to Board of Finance and then RTM after this board, or does it just go to this board? Just to this board. So it's this board and zoning? What are the approvals? Zoning Board of Appeals. Because there's a coverage issue at the board. So they're going to board Zoning Board of Appeals tomorrow to move coverage. Okay, so, so the approvals the approvals are, are Board of Ed. Board of Ed and Board of Ed. Because we certainly want their approval on this. Mm -hmm. uh, from a, a regulatory or legal standpoint, the Board of Selectmen and the ZBA and we'll have the ZBA and Board of Ed votes before it comes to this board. That's right. We have ZBA tomorrow, uh, Board of Ed uh, next week, and then coming back to you the following week. And the reason it's not going to the Board of Finance and the reason it's not going to the RTM are A, we're not spending any of our funds. Right. right. And there's no lease. And it's B, it's not a lease, so it doesn't go to the RTM. That's right. In addition to that. right. Is that so we clear did, to everybody? We did reach out to the RTM and ask if they wanted us to come and, and hear the matter, though. We did reach out. And did they want an update on a report? No, that we gave them the packet. Um, they gave us a few questions, but they didn't ask for an update. Okay. Ed, Ed when you okay. present this in two weeks, I'd be looking for um, what we currently spend on electricity at both high schools, what's been budgeted. Uh, I think I heard Scott mention that we're already getting a third off rooftop. I, I just want to see what we have, what's being generated by the third that's already on site what the additional third will do, and just how that works. I just want to look at the numbers. Yeah, we'll see the, the kilowatt hour down to dollars. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to see how much we're actually saving. Right. So th that's what I want. Anything? No. I'm good. Thanks, Scott. All right. Thank you. Just before you go quickly, one, um, I, I agree with Mr. Bateson's point on that, that, that I'd like to see that the dollar impact. I think it's good to always review that as part of this because we uh, tend to lose sight of that because it, there's so many good things about this, but sooner or later the dollar impact is an important part, important consideration. Uh, second, I do want to compliment you on the number of public hearings and the amount of outreach, outreach you did before it got here. I know that uh, a lot of times, as much as we do a very open, transparent process, sometimes we only do the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, RTM meeting, and some citizens miss that. So I want to compliment you in terms of what you took to go out. And I also want to confirm uh, that uh, you've taken this by police, fire, public works, and the school administration. So they're all comfortable logistically with how this works. Yeah. In any emergency situation, they won't have problems, be it fire trucks, be it any security issues with police, anything else, they're all okay with this. Yeah, that's right. And Sal Morbido, Morbido has uh, written information from transportation, uh, the plowing folks, the police and the fire. He has a ri written email. The parking lot contract. The parking lot contract. We, we vetted all of the that concerns. Yeah, and I guess the, the key is buses getting in. And I see buses on the diagram there, but buses can get around this with no trouble. Correct? Buses uh, fit, fire trucks fit, um, and what snow was it? Plows. The pl snow plows fit, uh, the plowing equipment uh, fits, with the exception of a raised. Uh, plow dump and we worked sat down with the plowing contractor and worked through a pattern to make sure that there would be no paving increased cost. Okay, so I know well, the one where the paving contractor Mr. Ed, if you're gonna talk you gotta get up to the mic oh, somewhere. Yeah. And I get forgetting. You don't kind of some of the things that you forgot. I no you no did. executive privilege, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> he yelled from the audience. But uh the paving contractor there was concern because the paving was taking out of the, the Ludlow paving was taken out of the budget. So Scott and, and Scott and Scott went, went to the paving contractor and he said there would be no increase to the budget 
if this was put in and they paid later. So okay. originally it was going to be thirty, forty thousand. I got it down, so there is no economic impact of delaying the paving of the parking lot. Okay, thank you. Because I know one of the considerations when we put this on rooftops is that it's a new roof, so we get the full right. twenty or thirty years out of the roof yep. on doing that. So on the parking lot, we're saying that's not a consideration because we can pave at no incremental cost if we need to. Not that we're going to, but if we need to. So the life of the parking lot uh, doesn't is not one of the That's concerns. Correct, yeah. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Thompson, thank you very much. Good thank luck. You. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for the easel, Joe. All right. All right. So next up, item seven from the Director of Public Works, and this requires Board of Finance and RTM approval. To hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Public Works. Whereas, it is desirable. Let's make a motion to waive the reading. All right, thank you. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mr. Uh, Michelangelo, if you just step us through what's being proposed, so if anybody at home was following along, even though we didn't read it all, you can tell us briefly what it is. Yes. Uh, our largest sanitary sewer pump station is the Mill River Pump Station, located approximately just uh, on the west side of the Sturgis Bridge there. Uh, currently, it's served by an emergency generator, a uh, diesel 200-kilowatt <coughs> uh, generator, uh, over 20 years old. One of the things we did, uh, we're always seeking grant opportunities. Uh, we applied for a FEMA grant through the Connecticut Demis to pay for 75% of a new generator. If you recall, we had a similar grant that was awarded a couple months ago for our biggest generator at the water pollution control plant. So this is the same program. That was a uh, probably three or four times larger than this one in size. So the dollar amount was larger. So it's the same program, same grant program. Uh, we were recently awarded. We've received notice at the uh, la in the end of March. Uh, went through the Water Pollution Control Authority. The local share, which is approximately 40000 will be paid for by the Water Pollution Control, uh, reviewing it with the finance director, just as we did the other one. Uh, he felt it needs to come before the, the, uh, all the town boards for the uh, subsequent approvals. Any questions from the board? No, it sounds like a good opportunity for us to... to 25 cents on the dollar. Cover our, cover our tails in case... We need it, so. Mr. Bateson, anything? Are we adding a generator or replacing it? We're replacing the generator. So currently there's a gen always been a generator there powered by uh, uh, diesel. So there's a uh, above ground fuel tank inside the building, which just looks like a residential 275 gallon fuel tank. So it powers the current generator for probably, uh, you know, a, a two day supply at most. And then you have to, and get a fuel truck out there and refill it. This will be uh, much quieter, natural gas, a permanent installation, automatic transfer switch, uh, up to a 30-day run time is what they rate these uh, natural gas generators for. So it's a much better situation, state-of-the-art, brand new service for 20, 25 years, no problem. And there's not going to be any, if th this is the one down near your house? Is there going to be any effect on the aesthetics of that building? Is, it, is there going to be a big tank outside? or No. Big? So, so currently, if you look at it, it's a pretty attractive stone building. Right. But on the right side of it, or the west side, there is a, like a uh, white fence enclosure, which is where the current generator sits. And the new generators will sit in that same location. OK, and, and, and it's going to be the same visual? Correct. Th this one will be elevated somewhat, so just like in our beach area homes we you know just like you see an air conditioning flood unit or flood zone you don't want to put it flush to the ground so it will be higher but it will be same type screen effect so it won't be visible from the uh, you know for the neighbors okay yeah I was going back because this area is in a flood zone which is why we're getting FEMA funding if you go back a few years I think in the spring we had a major rainstorm that Mill River overflowed big time and this area was flooded Correct. That's uh, yeah, it's a nice flat plain, and the river spreads out nicely right. in that area. So that's why we have to raise this because it has been flooded in the past, and uh, I think it was surrounded by water for more than two days, if I remember. And, and so power may not have been out, but 
uh, having the, the natural gas hookup will keep it uh, going if that should ever happen again. Correct. All right. So there's no tax dollars being spent on this? No, all through the WPCA user fees. Gotcha. All right. That's been approved, WPCA? It has been approved by W, correct? Correct, at their yep. meeting uh, last week. Okay. All right, so we're okay on that. And it will go to uh, the Board of Finance and RTM because we are accepting a grant and, in essence, expending that money as part of this, right? Correct. And then do we get reimbursed by the state? Yes, so we allocate the whole 160 and we get 120 change back. Gotcha. Any further questions from the board? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you, Joe. Ah, okay, oh. sorry. May I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion right. to accept. Uh, and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Good catch. Next up. Item 8, from the Director of Public Works, to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Public Works. Resolved that a solar power purchase agreement between the Town of Fairfield and Skyview Fairfield LLC for the purpose of erecting a photovoltaic electric generation system on the roof of the Fairfield Transfer Station located at 95 Richard White Way for the sole benefit of the Fairfield Transfer Station, the term of the agreement being between 20 being 20 years, B and hereby is approved. May I have a motion to accept? Make a motion. A second. Second. Uh, just to clarify, I think Mr. Bates, in the last time one of these came before us, had questions on the Skyview Fairfield LLC being the correct name of the entity we're doing business with. Is that correct? Well, Skyview is here. I can tell you that's okay. you Mr. changed Bates, the name of each phrase your question or? correctly? Yeah. That's when you moved, right? Yeah. Why don't you come up and make a how are you? I'm Sam Wahab from Skyview Ventures. Skyview Fairfield is a wholly owned subsidiary of Skyview Ventures. Um, almost all the projects that we do with the town of Fairfield run through Skyview Fairfield. Okay. Unless there's like a grant or something that we're dealing with on our end. Yeah, no, nope, thank you. Just question came up before, and I just wanted Absolutely. to clarify that there were again. Different names in the contract, right? This is a yeah. They, yes. It looks like they fixed it. It looks. It says Skyview Fairfield LLC, a Delaware LLC, which is what they identified. Yeah. Okay. Last time. We have since fixed that. Thank you. Yeah. No, I just thought that was a good catch last time, and I wanted to bring that up again. All right. Mr. Bowman, if you'll take us through. Pretty much the same proposal I'm coming every two weeks with. But the transfer station roof is a very small project. We will come back later with a second project to do part of the parking lot, raised over the parking lot. And we would have we would have withdrawn a small one, but they won't allow you to do a, uh, a second project on a site until, unless you complete the first one. So we'll a little one on the roof and a big one on the parking lot. Penfield Pavilion again, as it's been in the since the uh, pavilion was built, we have the idea of putting solar on Penfield Pavilion. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you could, I mean, yeah. your your backup seems to address all three. The motions address yeah. one at a time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Could you please kind of stick to the transfer station? All right. So that's basically the transfer station one. It's a ten cent uh, kilowatt hour contract over the life of the uh, contract. And we're currently buying power at what? Currently buying power at about. 17 and a half cents. So that'll go up over time. This won't. It's fixed. So that's a good thing. Uh, Look for fixed price? Yeah, 10 cents. 10 cents. Well, Mr. What was the last one we just did? Was that around 12 yeah, cents? Yeah, it depends. You know, if uh, the rooftops are usually cheaper than any other ones, and depending on the size, they. Uh, you know, so this is on the roof. That's why it's ten cents. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's fair if it was on the roof at eight cents. Transfer station is ten cents because it's first of all it's smaller, so the economics aren't there to give us a better price. And it's already been what two years? There, there's only eighteen years left on your. Okay, all right. So because it's just a smaller contract, so you're, you're going to a smaller price. The larger, like the the Ward and Lola ones, are around seven cents or six and a half cents because they're so large. You can do it that way. If they're on a, you know, like a. Uh, over a parking lot, they're going to cost more because it costs more to construct over a parking lot. That's that's all steel and uh, as we, and concrete, as we heard. So, are these provided through the state? Is it ZREC program? Yeah, it's all the ZREC program, right? Every uh, every one of these is ZREC. Uh, so that you know that they'll get the they've got the bid on it. They've got an award already, and they can go from there into the power purchase agreement. All right, go ahead. 
Yes. While we have the town attorney here, I'd just like to ask him if he has reviewed all of these. Yes. We're talking about no. the PPAs. Yes. Okay. There's actually a fourth one he hasn't finished with, so it's not on here. So. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Uh, next up, to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Public Works. Resolve that a solar purchase a power. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This one concerns the roof of Penfield Pavilion, so it's basically the same resolution program, except it has Penfield Pavilion, and this is uh, just confirm which Penfield Pavilion. The new one. The, okay. oh, actually, the new one, but the re not necessarily new, but it's still a newer one, yeah. yeah. And, and when, you, when we were redoing that, this, it was always done in mind to put solar on it, so it was designed <laughs> to have solar put on it. Solar hot water is already on it. This yeah. will be solar electricity. Is this going to go over the main building or over the locker room, or both? I'm not even sure. I don't have the driveway. It's is it the center building or It's the mostly the center building. There are the other two, I believe, the locker room, as you put it. Yep. There's south facing, There's few panels on there, but for the most part on the main building, which is flatter. It's a taller building, right? Yeah. Gotcha. So it's not as visible. All right. Any questions from the body? Chris? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about solar on, on the roof of Penfield right now. Uh, I'm saying that from the standpoint, we just built it brand new. We're going into our first season. Uh, can I, I mean, a couple things. One, aesthetically, are you going to see the solar panels from the parking lot? No, because it's on the second story. It's not on the lower building. The new building, you're not going to see it from the parking lot or barely. You won't see it from the beach much unless you, you see it from the water, basically, because it's the distance. Or what? Yeah. I'll Mr. jump on that too. Aesthetics wise, this this one I'd like to see more as is, or how it would look, like the presentation that was just mm -hmm. presented. Okay, is there a photo in here of what it would look like? Didn't or I give it the last the uh, last okay. two weeks ago? I think I did it. I presented all the. Yeah, I didn't. I, I really wasn't I getting really much out it. of that. <laughs> it's is there too? Okay. This is a uh, this is a copy of a photo. Yep. Is it possible to get the actual photo? Is that what I'm thinking is I know what's going to happen is your phone's going to light up when the, this mm -hmm. is coming down Penfield. You're going to start seeing panels. Now, I don't, I don't have an objection. That's what, this is what, I'm, that's what Yeah, that's what we saw. But I'm looking at. But in color, it's a lot easier to see. It's all mostly at the main buildings. Yeah. Has there been what sort of community outreach have we done on this? I no. think is that's what, that's what I'm yeah. yeah. right now. I just think. Okay, have we have we contacted like no, the Fairfield Beach Residents Association? Could, no, could we contact get, anyone on this. Could we get this out to the Fairfield Beach Residents yeah. Association? Sure. And the uh, Fair Acres Association. Fair Acres, right. right. You know where I'm going with the yep. aesthetics on this. And if you could, um, I don't know if there's any more Penfield. The, has the Penfield Building Committee just been made aware of this? Yes, they, they've known about it from the beginning. So. Okay. <coughs> So ordinarily, I support and have supported all the solar panels. This one, I think we just opened it up. It's brand new, um, and I'd really like the input, as Mike said, of the yeah. Beach Association. I mean, we're going to be having weddings there. Uh, well, also, know, too, it, it, I'm, I'm looking Are at you this. Again? No, no. <laughs> but I'm just like, like it's a banquet facility, um, yes. and no, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get married right. on a roof. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the, I think the issue is is, okay. is that um, I think this board. Uh, has consistently asked to make sure that the community is aware of what's taking place. It's not a function of being for or against the project. It's it's kind of a policy of no surprises. Uh, again, neighbors. I guess from our point of view, we've been doing that when it was anything but a rooftop. But I see this is a different kind of rooftop. So, yeah. yeah. And just because it's a just so you know, it's gonna, the new fire training center is also going to have solar, and that was built with that purpose too. So okay. And considering yeah. with Fairfield Beach Road, we might want to do that there too. No, I, and I hear you on that. I think there's uh, three, if not four, buildings in town uh, which are identifiable: Burr Homestead, Old Post. Yeah, I don't think I put one on Burr. Hall. Burr right. Homestead well, that's, that's or, or Old Town Hall. Uh, historic district. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but also too, this. I think we all have an, a, yeah. a vision in our head of Penfield being one of the crown jewels of the town. I, there's a certain yep. 
So I think, A, this board would like to see, I'm going to suggest literally color photos and something that is more clear in terms of our understanding right. the image. And then second, we'd also like to see that, that the neighborhood was contacted. Certainly right. we've got the neighborhood resident groups down yeah. there that would be. And we'll do something with the visual line so you can see what you can see right. from the street. or the uh, From the street and also, yeah. too, from the neighbors, home, like right. you were doing with that second floor, just yeah. okay. you know what's going to happen. Ed. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what happens with uh, um, slowing this down as far as accepting the Z rack and that type of Well, thing? I mean, we're only slowing it down for a few months, not a year, but you, you can. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't thinking months, maybe. I was, yeah. I mean, so, months. so this one is, um, well, the transfer station passed, which is great. This one, because of the utility rule that Ed was talking about, has to be totally energized by September 30th. Other ones don't really have that stipulation. This one is kind of an, another quirky rule that we have to build. How long it. does it take you to build it? Um, we always, you know, we're only on the roof really for two weeks, maybe three. As we all know, the utility, you know, we're really at the mercy of the utility. So, from, from when you get the go ahead mm -hmm. to when it's fully energized, how long does that take? Assuming the utility doesn't have a lot of delays, it mm -hmm. probably could take us three months. Just most of that's waiting okay, for you. So utilities. if it's got to be September 30th, you've got to have this approved by June 30th. Uh, if not a little uh, earlier, because we still have to do permitting. Yeah, there's, there's basically two RTM meetings. This, oh, this is just us. Sorry, sure, this sure. is not the RTM. Guys, right. this is just us. Mm -hmm. This is a power purchase agreement. So yeah. uh, you need to get out to the neighborhood ASAP. Uh, I would suggest either taking advantage of a uh, existing meeting or setting up a public meeting to promote this. I think what we'll do is uh, send out notices to the members of the association. Well, actually send out notices to the residents per se, whether they belong to the association or not, yeah. and notify the uh, officers of the association. Of the, and in the meantime, set up the kind of photo lines that we're talking about to show. Uh, yeah. And that should take more than a couple You can bring it back, so you, can get, you need to get back in here. Um, Early June. Yeah. First but, week in June. We got the three three meetings between now and June 30th. So, and we don't want to wait later. Once summertime comes, it's well. Hard not to if get it takes people. three months to get in. You don't. Well, you don't have time. You why? Like it's taking us a year and a half at the, yeah. at the landfill, even though they approve it. They just keep <laughs> going on. That's going to be energized May 15th, finally, after a whole year of sitting there with UI. So, and, and, I mean, I, all deadlines are deadlines, but most UI deadlines are sort of soft, right? Not this one. Not this one. Well, it yeah, depends this, on the funding for the program. Mo yeah. I would, most deadlines are soft. This one uh, is is hard. I'm not this is sort of matches by them. Pure set this up too. Yeah. With them. Okay. Kinda... Well, here's the here's the good news, bad news. If UI is the hold up and they can go anywhere from a week to a year and a half to approve it, whether we approve it now or the first week in June, it isn't on the critical path. The UI right. is right. totally on the critical. We can path. only do what we can do, right? <laughs> right. So, please do your best. Uh, I'm suggesting, I'm hearing that we're going to take no action on that item at this meeting until we hear Thank back. You. So okay. there's no, no prejudice, if you will. Uh, that's Penfield. All right, so we're on to item 10, which is to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Public Motion Works. Motion uh, reading. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This one concerns the uh, Fairfield Woods uh, Middle School. Right, Mr. Bowman. Yep. This is obviously a large, much larger one, so the price is lower. Uh, everything else is about the same in terms of 225,000 uh, uh, roughly KWH a year. It's a substantial savings. And for all, all three packages, the savings are estimated to be 500, although over 500 thousand dollars. But the rest of the presentation is the same as the last two. It, it is a rooftop. There is a second benefit with the middle school. So we're going on also from green skies, which will be coming in the next month or so. The roof has been divided. So, so you can do more than one. This isn't the only place in town where you have more than one solar. So it, it's interesting. I didn't, never thought it would happen that way, but it's happening. They're putting it on one part of the roof, and green skies put it on a different part of the roof. You put the same models on? No, they're on, they're on the, well, you know, and I do. So we actually already have a system on Woods Middle School okay. for the small z -Rack. And then Green Skies and, and Skyview were awarded mediums, which are just larger arrays. And so we don't necessarily put on the same um, uh, wattage size, but we work together to have one point of interconnection to make sure that all of the, everything works together. So, so our, would we get competing numbers to see who's outperforming who, Green Skies or 
Skyview? You, you, yeah, you, you guys will have access and see which array yeah. is performing better. Each one has its own sub meter, so. That's fine. So you actually have competition. Yeah. If it's, well, if, if it's apples to apples. <laughs> yeah. My support. This. I never thought I'd see the two of them working together. But. Any further questions on the board? BOE does not have to approve this, just us. Right? It's a power purchase agreement. I, right. So even though we're using their the, school, has uh, the BOE school? approved this? I don't think so. I mean, they haven't. They've been told about it. The only one to look for approval were the ones in the parking lot. The rooftop, they just informed, and they just. They, they all are worried about is the twenty-year roof, and then this right. has the roof in front of you. And that's so. that's how they we have act. They haven't acted on any of the other ones yeah. except for the. I just, got just in terms of understanding, to, to Mr. Bateson's point, we've put uh, solar panels on the roof, partially at Fairfield Woods Middle School already. Yeah. Partially at Ward. Partially, partially at Ludlow. Ludlow. As the Board of Ed, Board of Ed was aware of all that. Yeah. Did they did they vote to form they didn't any of that? Any of them, no. okay. So if they if they saw form. those. If they saw those and had concerns or objections to the process or their approval, certainly they would have raised that point yeah. in the past. But I so, mean, Sal Moore, you don't know what you're doing this, right? Oh, yeah, we work with Sal. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just, I, mean, I'm doing I don't want town. Sal showing up and you guys on top of the roof saying, Sal's hey, what are you doing, doing the schools, I'm doing the town. We, we yeah. work together. But, and yeah. okay. and I believe I heard you say they are aware of it. Even though oh, yeah. the Board of Ed didn't formally vote on it, they are aware of it and certainly would have known they could have raised an objection if we were doing it. Right. They really felt. They didn't know why they had to vote on it. It's a town building, and just being aware of it, and they would have raised an objection if they had an objection. So that was basically it. No. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Any, uh, okay, if I go to the public? Mm -hmm. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Any final comments or questions? No. Ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. All right, Brown. thank you. So Next work, up, item 11 is the tax collector, and I believe we have our new backup sheet here yep. go, that lays all that out. Uh, to consider and act upon tax refunds is recommended by the tax collector in the amount of, wow, $15,208.61. May I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion. A second? Second. Yeah. All right. Uh, item is before us. Any further comments? I have no amendments today. All right. <laughs> all right. Are we ready to vote? Yes. yes. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All right, next up is the town attorney, a private executive session concerning pending litigation. May I have a motion to go into pending litigation with a town attorney, attorney, our tax attorney, our human resources director, and Mr. Bob Mayer. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, I, what I'd like to do is, since we have two separate matters with two different lawyers, yes. I'd like to uh, take the one involving attorney Katz first. And uh, his, I think his will be briefer. He's just going okay. to update. Okay. That is, that, so. yes, please. Fine. Okay. May I have a motion to go on a private executive session oh. with uh, the invited guests? Yes. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jerry, you got that audio? All right, and I have a motion we come out of private executive session? Second. No, move. I move to come out of executive session. I'll second session. it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We're now out of, uh, we're now back in public session. Won't you uh, ask that Timmy, I got to leave. So. Um, just want to mention that no motions were made and no votes were taken in private executive session. Uh, Selectman Timmy Act did have an appointment that, uh, urgent appointment that he had to leave for. Uh, we will continue the meeting with Selectman Bateson and myself. Um, may I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the attorney? I make a motion to accept the uh, attorney's recommendation. Uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That is done. Uh, next up, to hear, consider, and act upon any other business that shall properly come before this meeting. Nothing. All right. Uh, then may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Jerry, thank you. Sheila, thanks for coming back in.